For thousands of years, the stars have called to us, yet we remain stuck on our tiny blue world while even our fastest probes crawl through space at only a tiny slice of light speed. As we dream of touching distant worlds and meeting alien civilizations, we must confront a sobering truth. The universe seems almost deliberately designed to keep us trapped in our solar system. So, imagine you're planning a trip to our nearest stellar neighbor, Proxima Centauri, sitting a modest 4.37 light years away. Sounds close, right? Dead wrong. Even traveling at the breakneck speed of our fastest probe, Voyager 1, you'd need to pack snacks for a modest 73,000 year journey. That's longer than recorded human history. Your great, 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 great grandchildren would be ancient history before you even glimpsed your destination. But let's get ambitious. What if we could somehow achieve 10% of light speed, a feat that would require technology so advanced it borders on science fiction? Even then, that quick hop to Proxima Centauri, that would take 44 years. Far more exotic destinations like Kepler-452b, Earth's so-called cousin, at 1400 light years away. You'd be looking at a 14,000 year commute. Multiple civilizations could rise and fall in the time it takes your spacecraft to reach its target. And here's the real deal. Einstein's theory of special relativity, it shows that nothing can travel faster than light, and it would take infinite energy to accelerate any material object to light speed. The mathematics are as beautiful as they are brutal. Einstein's equations don't just set a speed limit, they actively conspire against us, making approaching that limit practically impossible. Einstein's special relativity doesn't merely cap our maximum velocity, it actively tortures us as we approach light speed. The faster you go, the more massive you become, and the more energy you need to accelerate further. It's like climbing a mountain that gets infinitely steeper with every step, until, at light speed, you'd need infinite energy just to take one more step forward. This isn't just inconvenient, it's physically impossible. Consider the energy requirements for accelerating even a modest spacecraft to half light speed. We're talking about converting matter directly into energy with perfect efficiency, essentially requiring fusion or antimatter engines that make our current rockets look like party sprinklers. The fuel alone, that would likely outweigh the payload by orders of magnitude. But wait, there's more cosmic cruelty ahead. At high speeds, spacecraft would face catastrophic impacts from cosmic dust, with single grains creating impact energies of 10,000 megajoules. At near light speeds, even the sparse hydrogen atoms floating in empty space become deadly projectiles capable of shredding your hull like tissue paper. That's roughly equivalent to being hit by a rifle bullet every few meters of travel. Your spacecraft would need shielding so massive that it would make the energy problem exponentially worse. You're not just fighting physics, physics is actively fighting back. Even if we somehow conquered the physics puzzle, human biology delivers its own devastating blow. Interstellar journeys at any realistic speed would span multiple generations. We're talking about maintaining a functioning society, complete with governments, economies, and ecosystems, while hurtling through the absolute emptiness of space for centuries or even millennia. This almost feels like trying to keep a city alive and thriving while floating in a metal can for a thousand years. The psychological challenges alone are staggering. Would the people who eventually arrived still be recognizably human? Would they even remember why they left? Would they still speak the same language, worship the same gods, or share the same dreams as their ancestors who began the journey? These generation ships would essentially become traveling civilizations, evolving and changing in ways we can barely imagine. By the time they reach their destination, they might be as alien to us as we are to ancient Egyptians. But here's the truly unsettling part. They'd be completely alone, with no possibility of help, no way to turn back, and no guarantee that their destination would even be habitable by the time they arrive. Faced with these seemingly insurmountable barriers, physicists have turned to more exotic solutions. The most famous is the Alcubierre warp drive, proposed by Miguel Alcubierre in 1994. His idea was audacious. Instead of moving through space, why not move space itself? The concept is elegant in its simplicity and absolutely mind-bending in its implications. The idea was to create a warp bubble that contracts space-time in front of your spacecraft and expands it behind. 
The ship itself never exceeds light speed locally. It's just along for the ride as space-time carries it forward. It's like standing on a cosmic conveyor belt that moves faster than light while you remain perfectly still. Brilliant, right? Here's the catch. The original energy requirements were astronomical, potentially requiring the equivalent of minus 10 to the power of 64 kilograms to transport a small spaceship across the Milky Way. That's not just more energy than we have, it's more energy than exists in the observable universe. We're talking about energy requirements so vast, they make the Big Bang look like a firecracker. Even the traditional warp drive needs something that might not even exist, exotic matter with negative energy density. This violates what physicists call the weak energy condition, a fundamental rule that says all observers should see positive energy density. And the Casimir effect offers a glimmer of hope. This quantum phenomenon creates negative energy pressure between two closely spaced plates. Some warp drive enthusiasts cling to this as proof that negative energy exists. But it is unclear whether this quantum quirk could be scaled up to warp starships. Recent breakthroughs have challenged the exotic matter requirement. In 2021, physicist Eric Lentz published calculations showing that positive energy warp bubbles might be possible. Though they would still require approximately 10 to the power of 45 joules of energy for a 100-meter craft, that's roughly the daily energy output of the Sun for about, let's say, 100 million years. A dramatic improvement over earlier estimates, but still representing more energy than humanity has ever produced in its entire history. Several studies suggest that building a warp drive requires having a warp drive, a classic Catch-22 situation. To create the space-time warping needed for faster-than-light travel, some of the exotic matter must itself be moving faster than light. But if nothing can exceed light speed, how do you bootstrap your way to a warp drive? It's like trying to lift yourself off the ground by pulling on your own bootstraps. The physics seem to actively prevent the very thing you're trying to achieve. Even if you could somehow create a warp bubble, you'd face another devastating problem. You couldn't control it. Due to the way space-time works around a warp drive, occupants inside the bubble would be casually disconnected from the front of their own spacecrafts. Any signals they send forward would pile up at the bubble's edge, never reaching their destination. This means, well, the warp drive couldn't be controlled from within. You'd need pre-existing infrastructure. Imagine massive energy field generators strung along interstellar highways, turning on at precisely the right moments to create and maintain warp bubbles. We're talking about engineering projects that would make the pyramids look like sandcastles. The problems don't stop there. It only gets worse, much worse. As a warp bubble travels through space, it would scoop up particles and radiation like a cosmic snowplow, accumulating everything in its path. When the drive finally stops, all that accumulated energy would be released in a devastating burst, potentially enough to obliterate entire planets. It's like arriving at your destination only to accidentally commit genocide on a planetary scale. But that's not even the worst part. Brace yourself for this one. The warp bubble itself would generate Hawking radiation, though the exact temperature and intensity remain model-dependent. Some calculations suggest temperatures approaching the Planck scale, about 10 to the power of 32 Kelvin, while others indicate more modest but still lethal levels. Even the conservative estimates would instantly vaporize both the spacecraft and its occupants before they even knew what hit them. You wouldn't just die, you'd be converted into elementary particles in a fraction of a nanosecond. The radiation would be so intense that it would make the surface of the sun feel like a refreshing spring day. Perhaps, and perhaps most bizarrely, any faster-than-light travel method inevitably becomes a time machine. This is the direct consequence of Einstein's relativity. The warp drive could create closed time-like curves, allowing travelers to arrive before they left, and potentially create paradoxes that would make the grandfather paradox look simple. To understand when warp drive technology might become feasible, we need to consider the Kardashev scale, which measures civilizations by their energy consumption. Warp drive technology it would likely require civilizations at Kardashev 1.5, or two levels, capable of harvesting sufficient matter and energy from their star systems or even entire stars. Humanity currently ranks at about 0.7 on this scale. We're not even a Type 1 civilization yet. We can't even fully harness our own planet's energy. Reaching the levels needed for a practical warp drive, that could take millennia, assuming we don't destroy ourselves first. 
Interestingly, most of these problems disappear if we abandon faster than light travel and stick to subliminal warp drives. These wouldn't violate causality, wouldn't require exotic matter, and wouldn't turn us into cosmic time travelers. They'd still represent a revolutionary advance in propulsion technology, allowing us to reach significant fractions of light speed while controlling the rate of time passage within the bubble. Interstellar travel remains out of reach. We face physics, not just engineering, colossal energy bills, hypothetical exotic matter, uncontrollable horizons, lethal radiation, and time loop paradoxes. Even the chase matters. Every warp drive paper tightens our grasp on space-time and trims the energy mass. Sublight dreams survive. Breakthrough Starshot's gram-scale sails, they could hit Proxima at 0.2c, while fusion pellet engines might push crude craft to 0.15c within a lifetime. Generation arcs and robotic scouts are plausible next steps. The cosmos may feel like a cage, but ingenuity keeps testing the bars. Until then, the journey to understand is itself our greatest voyage. If you enjoyed this exploration, hit like and subscribe for more Deep Space Deep Dives.